Ants are ever-present organisms commonly found throughout tropical forests worldwide. They make colonies that range from a few individuals up to millions. And although they make up roughly 2% of nearly a million species of insects described, ants are estimated to comprise four times the biomass of all vertebrates on Earth combined. Such dominance, not surprisingly, exposes the ants to a broad range of pathogens, especially fungal parasites. Among those are Ophiocordyceps, the intriguing zombie ant fungi. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at some of the zombies of the natural world. To find the world's most sinister examples of mind control, don't look to science fiction. Instead, go to a tropical country like Brazil and venture deep into the jungle. Find a leaf that's hanging almost exactly 25 centimeters above the forest floor, no more and no less. Now look underneath it. If you're in luck, you might find an ant clinging to the leaf's central vein, jaws clamped tight for dear life. But this ant's life is already over and its body belongs to Ophiocordyceps unilateris, the zombie ant fungus. When a spore lands on an ant, it lodges itself into its head through an exposed part of the ant's exoskeleton. The fungus infects a carpenter ant and grows through the insect's body, draining it of nutrients and hijacking its mind, essentially turning it into the walking dead. Over the course of a week, it compels the ant to leave the safety of its nest and ascend a nearby plant stem. It stops the ant at a height of 25 centimeters, a zone with precisely the right temperature and humidity for the fungus to grow. It forces the ant to permanently lock its mandibles around a leaf like a death grip. As the ant clenches to the underside of the leaf, the fungus slowly feeds on it. Eventually, it sends a long stalk through the ant's head growing into a bulbous capsule full of spores. By this time, the ant is dead. But because the ant typically climbs a leaf that overhangs its colony's foraging trails, the fungal spores rain down onto its sisters below, zombifying them in turn. But ants are really good at sniffing out invaders in their territories or colonies. If an ant is acting funny, another ant will grab it and drag it into a graveyard outside of the colony. The fungus, as it is invading the body, has to somehow escape detection, so it doesn't make the ant behave all that strangely until it begins directing the ant out of the colony. It doesn't seem to invade the brain in essence. It grows a film around it, probably releasing chemicals of some sort that command the ant to leave the colony. Even more incredible is that as it is growing through the tissues, it is invading the muscles and splitting apart those fibers severing the connections of the neurons. This doesn't seem to make sense because it has to be able to have the ant mobile. What appears to happen is that the fungus is forming its own central nervous system inside the ant, releasing chemicals that mimic the neurotransmitters in the ant's own body to almost literally pull the strings like a puppet master and then guide the ant to an extremely precise position in the forest. But ants are not the only creatures that can be zombified. It may seem difficult to pity a cockroach, let alone a zombie cockroach, but consider what happens when a cockroach meets a parasitic wasp. There are many species of parasitic wasps, and their various parasitizing tactics reportedly inspired the alien movies. The jewel wasp offers a particularly chilling example. When a jewel wasp's eggs are fertilized, she needs to find one cockroach host for each egg. A cockroach is considerably larger than a jewel wasp and also has that tough exoskeleton. The wasp handles this by first stinging the cockroach on its abdomen, paralyzing it. Then the horror movie begins. The wasp's next sting is a precise dose of venom to the cockroach's brain. It gets a quick jolt of dopamine, which causes the cockroach to compulsively groom itself. The wasp, out and about stinging other cockroaches, returns. The cockroach physically has the ability to walk away, but it does not. The zombie cockroach is under complete control of the wasp and behaves like a dog on a lead. This is hard work for a wasp, 
so she pulls off the cockroach's antennae and drinks the seeping liquid. Then she leads the roach by the antennae nubs into a burrow she has excavated. She deposits a single egg on the cockroach's leg, then buries it alive with pebbles. The nightmare is far from over. The venom keeps the cockroach alive and healthy by slowing its metabolism. When the young wasp hatches, it now has its first, and still fresh, cockroach dinner. In the case of the female Glipantamplis wasp, found in Central and North America and New Zealand, it's a caterpillar that is of utmost interest. The wasp lays its eggs in the body of the caterpillar. The eggs hatch and the larvae feed on the caterpillar's body fluids until they are ready to eat through the body of their host and enter the cocoon stage on a nearby twig or leaf. But they are not done with the poor caterpillar yet, which has somehow survived the whole process of being a soup kitchen to some 80 wasp larvae. Instead of crawling off to die, the caterpillar stands guard over the cocoons and, like any good zombie, it will actually lash out violently at anything that comes near its creepy little offspring. Then, after no longer inclined to eat, it conveniently dies right around the time the young wasps emerge from their cocoons. Possibly the most disturbing example of zombie animals is the zombie cricket, crickets that are infected with a parasitic worm. The worm grows to adulthood inside the cricket, and then, when the worm needs to get out of the cricket to find a mate, it takes control of the cricket's brain, causing the cricket to find a body of water and jump in. Crickets can't swim, so ultimately drowns. As the cricket drowns, the worm exits the cricket, but the horrible thing is the worm is ten times longer than the cricket. The zombie phenomenon extends far beyond the world of invertebrates. Parasites can also invade mammals to control their behavior too. Take for example the Toxoplasma gondii, a parasite that infects cats, and its favorite host is the rat. Stranger still is that infected rats completely lose their fear of felines and find themselves attracted to the smell of cats. By compelling the rat to act in ways that make it more likely to be eaten by a cat, Toxoplasma gondii brilliantly ensures the survival of its species. Researchers have proposed that it is the parts of the rat brain responsible for sexual attraction that become altered and compel the rat to become somehow sexually attracted to the smell of cats, which under normal circumstances would be repugnant to it. So as you can see, zombies have a long natural history, stretching back tens of millions of years, and nature has been filled with creeping, oozing, blood-sucking, and otherwise ghastly creatures just as terrifying as anything Hollywood could concoct. What do you think of our choice of vampires? Let us know in the comments, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.